Welcome to Fantastic Plastic, a series of SolidWorks video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. In Fantastic Plastic, I'll be presenting strategies and techniques for injection molded plastic part design using SolidWorks CAD software. I'm Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer with the Demonic Group. The Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy located just outside Chicago, Illinois. In this installment of Fantastic Plastic, we're going to continue to take a look at how we can uh, speed up the modeling of similar geometry found on the inside of plastic parts by leveraging some of the pattern tools in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, we previously took a look at the curved driven pattern tool, which we used to help speed up the modeling of these little fingers, uh, forming part of the groove detail on this plastic shroud. Uh, we're going to switch that up a little bit in this installment and take a look at the sketch driven pattern tool which is great for creating uh, instances of geometry where we want to precisely control uh, where they appear. Uh, the other thing we covered in the previous installment was the fact that uh, even though you might be able to select a draft feature, it does not actually uh, get patterned when you click OK on those pattern features. Uh, so we're going to cover another kind of workaround where if we can't necessarily build the draft into the feature, we're still going to be able to uh, pattern all of that draft when we go to create our uh, sketch driven pattern feature. So here we can see the uh, kind of completed shroud in SolidWorks. We've got these uh, three little hook details. And if we were to orient the view correctly, we can see that we may have been able to create the, the pattern with the curve driven tool if the instances were equally spaced, which they're not. The spacing is unequal because of this opening in the part. So this is a great situation where the curve or the sketch driven pattern tool can, uh, can really speed this up. So I have these uh, features kind of in a folder here for hooks. And the way I went about creating these was just using this kind of standard uh, extrude features. So here I created a plane and then this allowed me to kind of sketch this little rectangular shape. Uh, for the sake of clarity of where I wanted to position these, I did kind of sketch out the other ones so that way I could have all the um, dimensions in this one sketch. But I selected the sketch entities and made them for construction so the feature would only build uh, for one instance. And one thing to note, and I'm going to change the color here so that way it's a little easier to see. So even though I did change the body for what color, for whatever reason, it's not showing up. But one thing to note is I did not merge the body. Note you're not seeing those new edges there generated by the feature. And if we examine the feature itself, I have turned the merge result option off. What this is going to allow me to do is kind of just model this hook detail without worrying about the rest of the part. You know, we could even go ahead and hide that part and just worry about uh, this body so here created the actual hook detail. Next, I went about creating uh, these ribs that help tie it in. I will reshow the main body at this point because I used an offset from surface feature to uh, end these because I didn't really want them to go all the way through. I could have potentially used up to body, uh, but I uh, found that sometimes it's a little bit uh, more robust to have the geometry kind of pierce through. So here I have used an offset which is equal to uh, about 40% of the wall thickness. The wall thickness is uh, 3.5 millimeters, so I've set it just a little bit under to make sure that those ribs pierce all the way into the geometry. Uh, I also need to be aware of the uh, feature scope. So even though I am merging the result, I need to select the right body. I only want to merge it into kind of this portion of the hook. I don't want to merge all of the body at this point. So I'm going to continue adding uh, some details here. Oh, for whatever reason, it decided it wanted to be purple now, which is great. It's a little easier to see. And so because the, um, the draft feature kind of doesn't pattern, one workaround we can do for that is to add all of our draft with a feature to the body. Because when I actually pattern the body, I'm patterning the geometry. If I were to pattern the individual features, it's like patterning the instructions I'm giving to SolidWorks to generate that geometry. So this is a great workaround uh, for when you do need a pattern geometry and you can't really build it into the feature. I did need to add some draft in the other direction based on the lifter that was forming some of this to get this undercut out. I added a little bit of uh, filleting here because it can speed up the process. I only have to do it once. And then now that I have the, kind of the instance completed, uh, I'm going to reshow the original sketch. And one thing I no put in this sketch is I placed a series of sketch points 
kind of all in the same point along my pattern. So kind of in the middle of this bottom line segment. And then what I did was I have my sketch here and I created a 3D sketch. And this 3D sketch is how the sketcher and pattern is going to work. So I, I placed sketch points coincident kind of on top. I don't need this one because this instance already generated. I only need to generate two more instances. Uh, and then the pattern will appear kind of wherever I want, but I need to specify in the pattern. I need to have this kind of sketch point here so that way it knows where to position the instances. So actually looking at the features, I have that 3D sketch with the two sketch points showing where the new instances should be. And by default, the point is kind of the centroid, so it just kind of draws a bounding box around this feature and says, oh, that's the center of it, which is not going to be correct. Uh, it might be a little hard to see. If we go to a side profile. Yeah, here we can see that, yes, the uh, this distance should be the same, but this distance here should be the same. But, uh, you know, these are obviously going to be different because they're along, but it's still in, in space in the... Uh, in the Z direction on this part, it's uh, not in the correct orientation. Uh, so by changing the option for reference point to selected point, which I'm going to actually pick kind of that matching sketch point, it now knows where to uh, orient the pattern instead of using that centroid. And then instead of patterning the features uh, made up, you know, all of those different features that were in this folder, there's a few of them, you know, all these guys, I just clicked the, uh, the overall body and then all those features, the draft, everything kind of gets built in, and then the uh, the pattern gets propagated. Uh, one thing to note is that the uh, the bodies don't automatically merge in, so we can see that we have four unique bodies here. We kind of got to stick those together, and that's where the combine tool comes in. So the combine tool, I'm operation type add because I want to add all these together. I don't want to kind of do a boolean subtract uh, or a common, so I'll just. Window select everything, click OK, and now everything's going to merge together. I have that one body, and I've been able to kind of model the geometry once and then quickly use the, uh, the sketch pattern to generate the uh, additional instances of this pattern. Uh, so to quickly recap, the, uh, the multi-body strategy can be very useful in helping to speed up the modeling of these features. I'm just going to model kind of one of these hooks and then use the uh, the sketch-driven pattern tool to propagate them. Just be aware of setting up your selected point so that way when you do generate the feature and you use your, your 3D sketch or your 2D sketch to uh, indicate where the instances should go, that you use the selected point such that the uh, instances are correctly aligned. And then reminder, instead of uh, using the features, we're just going to pick our completed body do all that modeling on that one body and then allow have the pattern to, uh, to propagate it and finally use the uh, combine feature to put it all back together. I hope you enjoyed this week's SOLIDWORKS video tutorial presented by the Damani Group. Please subscribe to the Damani Group on YouTube by clicking our logo in the bottom right of the screen to stay up to date on new video releases. As well, click the SOLIDWORKS icon to be taken to our website where you can download the example SOLIDWORKS files used in this week's video. And finally, check out other great content by the Damani Group. Will it fill it and surface in splines by clicking the video links on the left of the screen.